Kaiju File 1, Godzilla. In 1954, an American hydrogen bomb test at Bikini Atoll in the South Pacific Ocean disturbed a giant prehistoric reptile from its underwater slumber and left it heavily irradiated. The monster began attacking various ships in the waters off Japan, prompting a search party to be sent to Odo Island, where some of the survivors had washed ashore. The islanders believed the shipwrecks were caused by Godzilla, a giant sea monster from their folklore, which they believed would come ashore to feed on humanity. Soon after, a typhoon struck the island, leaving it devastated. However, it was apparent most of the damage was caused by something other than a typhoon, as houses in the village appeared to have been crushed from above. A research team, headed by Dr. Kyuhei Yamane, was sent to the island to investigate. During their research, they discovered a giant irradiated footprint. Embedded in the footprint was a long extinct arthropod called a trilobite. Before they could finish their research, the monster that was responsible for the shipwrecks and the damage on the island appeared over a hill looking down on the island's inhabitants. The people had no other choice than to flee, realizing the creature was at least 50 meters in height. Back in Japan, Yamane named the creature Godzilla after the monster from Oto Island folklore, and proposed it was a transitional organism from the Jurassic period, related to both land-living and sea-dwelling reptiles. Yamane believed that Godzilla was exposed to a recent American H-bomb test, hence the radiation found in his footprint, and stressed the creature should be studied to see how it survived to this point. The government disagreed, however, sending in the Japan Self-Defense Force to destroy the monster. The JSDF sent battleships, armed with depth charges, to assault Godzilla. And after the assault was finished, they declared the monster dead. However, Godzilla soon surfaced in Tokyo Bay completely unharmed, plunging Japan and the international community into a state of emergency. Godzilla soon came ashore in Tokyo, destroying the outskirts of the city before returning to the bay. In response, the JSDF erected a barrier of power lines around the heart of Tokyo, with 300,000 volts of electricity passing through them, in hopes they would halt Godzilla. When Godzilla returned and came ashore again, he tore through the power lines and melted them with a beam of radioactive heat fired from his mouth. The JSDF fired on Godzilla with artillery and tanks, but their weapons had no effect. Godzilla proceeded into downtown Tokyo, transforming the Japanese capital into a sea of flame overnight. With his rampage concluded, Godzilla returned to the bay, where he was attacked by F-86F Sabre fighter jets, before finally disappearing beneath the waves. In the aftermath of Godzilla's raid, Tokyo was an uninhabitable wasteland, burned to a crater and contaminated with deadly radiation. The Japanese government was at a loss in combating the monster and preventing future attacks. Having nowhere else to turn, Scientist Dr. Daisuke Sarazawa was approached about an experimental chemical weapon he had developed called the Oxygen Destroyer. Sarazawa was horrified by the idea of revealing his invention to the world and refused at first, but was eventually convinced. Sarazawa burned his notes on the Oxygen Destroyer and handed it over to the JSDF. A boat was sent to Tokyo Bay using a Geiger counter to locate Godzilla underwater. Sarazawa and Hideo Ogata, a Japanese Coast Guard officer, donned diving suits to go underwater and detonate the device. Once they reached Godzilla, who was sitting on the ocean floor, Ogata was pulled to the surface while Sarazawa severed his line and activated the device, sacrificing his own life to stop Godzilla and prevent his weapon from ever falling into the wrong hands. After a few moments, Godzilla rose to the surface and roared defiantly at the boat before sinking under the waves to his death. While the people on the boat both celebrated Godzilla's demise and mourned Sarazawa's sacrifice, Dr. Yamane solemnly warned that it was unlikely Godzilla was the last member of his species, and that if mankind continued nuclear testing, another Godzilla would almost certainly appear.